Good morning, good afternoon, good evening uh, to all of the people in the XRP Army community. Today we have a very special treat. Um, we're going to have uh, a person that needs no introduction in our XRP community, um, Attorney John E. Deaton, and he is going to be having a conversation today with J.W. Verrett. And J.W. Uh, has many um, initials after his name, uh, JD, CPA slash CVA. And he is also a former uh, advisor to the SEC. And so uh, I am very honored to be able to introduce the two of them. And uh, what I'm going to do is just fade into the background and let the two of them have a conversation about what they want to talk about. All right. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen. And I'll come back in at the uh, end of y'all's conversation and wrap things up. And uh, OK, Rick, if you want to go. Hey, J.W. Hey, John, good to see you, man. Good to see you. It's my yeah. pleasure to, uh, to meet you. Uh, I've been le actually looking forward to talking to you because uh, unlike me, you're someone who has had interaction with the SEC, with the commissioners, with the chairman. And uh, I became a big fan when I saw your uh, your last statement to the commission. So how about we start off there? What was your mindset and uh, why did you say what you said? Yeah, well, I, I decided to go out with a bang a little bit. So my um, uh, everybody's got their uh, their kind of uh, their, their mentors and their heroes. And for me, it's for a long time. It's been Commissioner Purse. Uh, you know, I, I knew her before she was crypto mom. We've been we used to work together at a think tank a long time ago. Uh, so uh, and my day job is a securities law professor. That's most of what I do is teach securities law. You know, it really annoys me when I hear some comments at the highest level of the SEC. And I'll just get direct from Chairman Gensler. That are just so obsequious about the Howey test, about the definition of a security, because, you know, I, I teach the class. OK, and it's hard. In fact, we read your amicus brief because it's pretty good on the Howey test. I have the students read it. But we talk about the Howey test in all this, this long line of cases going back 80 years that develops from some tests that predated the SEC. So you could say it goes back 100 years or even more. It's it's tricky. It's difficult. And when you have decentralized uh, blockchain based systems that uh, kind of the code is written and they go off on their own and then you have increasing decentralization of the node operators and the validators and everything it just doesn't fit within the four corners of the howie test or at least it's very arguable it's a very difficult thing to 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 to, to nail down but if you heard Gensler's speeches he says oh it's easy easy that's a security that's a security everything's a security the sh my old shoes are a security my refrigerator is a security i mean come on man um so seeing that nuance in my classes and to be honest at the staff level in the you know FinReg hub, the kind of digital asset transformation kind of point person there, they're pretty sophisticated people too, and they get a lot of it too. But it but all you get is talking points from the chairman, and that's just incredibly frustrating to me. And it does a disservice to the staff at the SEC. Does a disservice to me. And this used to be academic for me when I was just kind of studying it, and but since becoming a digital asset investor over the last year or two, it's personal for me now. Next coin he goes after could be my coin. Absolutely, and I can see its value drop, and so I'm starting to take it very personally that that uh, that 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 this abuse of the Howie test. So that's that's why I decided to jump up. I had a tweet on on, on some on Twitter about it, a little clip, and you retweeted it and went kind of viral. A lot of people were interested. Absolutely. In it, so no, no, no. I, I know uh, the people in the XRP community definitely uh, uh, adopted it, became a big fan. You know, which actually is a perfect example. You said you're a digital asset investor, and the the next attack could be on the token you own. You know, a lot of people call me um, the XRP attorney, right? And they they ignore the fact that I've made it publicly known that I have larger investments in Bitcoin, larger investments in Ethereum. Um, but I was an XRP holder when I read the complaint and they were alleging certain things in the complaint, like the very nature of XRP itself. That's a direct quote in the complaint. All XRP holders joined into a common enterprise with all other XRP holders and Ripple 
I was reading it saying, well, you, you could say that about Bitcoin. You could say that about gold investors. You could, this is crazy. And then when I saw that they didn't make a distinction between 2013's XRP and 2020 or today's XRP, then as an individual holder, I just said, hey, this is, you know, this is crazy. And I knew it was going to happen. I knew that the, the major exchanges were going to delist or suspend because it's the, the cautious thing to do, right? In case the SEC is successful. And so um, my question to you is, why do you think that other that like the trade associations haven't joined in as much in this XRP fight? Because I, I'll be honest with you, JW, I made a comment early on that the way the SEC wrote the complaint, they there's not a single allegation of fraud or misrepresentation, but they wrote it in a way like fraud like language. And my theory was it is sort of to cause inflammatory reactions and divide the community. But uh, I think that uh, someone like Ryan Selkis, who has been a very big critic of XRP said it best, where he said that, you know, he's not a fan of XRP or Ripple, but he's certainly rooting for them to win. So what's yeah, your reaction? Yeah. And I'm a, I'm a fan of yours. I'm a fan of Ripple and I'm a fan of Selkis. So I'm, 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 I'm very much a wag me guy. I'm wag me all the way. <laughs> um uh look at you know what I, I think um just speaking for myself I need to get more involved and um I don't know why I haven't been I'm just starting to get involved over the next year uh but the next case the next amicus brief I just I want to give my time freely if if you could use me even if it's just to do uh blue booking of the of the footnotes <laughs> Man, I'd love to help out. I think for now, I can just sort of make some noise and let people uh, know what I think and see if those ideas have have legs. Uh, right. So that's what I'm trying to do with op eds and with uh, with this with the statement to the commission and various other outlets. I'm trying to find like this um, because the, the next coin could be any one of our coins, and and the SEC doesn't care who they hurt. That that mu that much is clear, you know. And I think even under Clayton. A few of these settlements involved uh, a deal where you know you told the hold the token holders were told if you want to sell back you can right. for two to three act uh, uh, violations. But I think even that limiting principle is gone under Gensler. I don't think they're really doing that anymore. No. Um, so it, it's more of the XRP uh, the, the Ripple case philosophy of just just burn it all down. Yeah, I like, and you know, one thing that I wanted to focus on is you had a tweet the other day that I loved, which was, you said, you know, if you're gonna, this, this, I think you called it the uh, inter-token war, and that if someone, you know, wants to attack a, a, a token, do it with fundamental analysis, you know, what was the purpose behind that? Because I, I wholeheartedly believe in that. Well, um, honestly... A lot of XRP world was saying, started paying attention to me and started saying, why are you talking about Ethereum? Why are you talking about Bitcoin? And I, I just, I wanted to let the world know kind of where I stood that let's debate tokenomics, let's debate fundamentals, user adoption. Um, and I think it's fair to say XRP would have done a lot better, but for the SEC complaint in its competition with other stable coins, which is a shame. And it's not fair. It's absolutely not fair. And I hope we get that resolved eventually. Um uh, but yeah, that was, that's kind of where I was coming from. Just to m remind folks that I'm for you against the SEC, but I don't think this this intercoin tribalism stuff is 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 helpful. Let's keep it fundamental. Let's keep it technical. No, absolutely. Well, you know the thing about it, you know, I've been dying to. I don't know. I'm going to read you something because you you teach this stuff, right? I, you know, a lot of people took it as a joke, but after I filed my writ of mandamus on January 1st of 2021. I went on a podcast like 10 days later and a question was, how long have you been a securities lawyer? And I said, yeah, about 10 days now, right? And so when I was reading the, the SEC in their opposition to the motion to intervene, you know, they wrote that the quote, the XRP traded even in the secondary market is the embodiment of those facts, circumstances, promises, and expectations and today represents that investment contract. And to me, I read that that clearly says that even the XRP in the secondary market is an investment contract with Ripple. And I don't know, do you have an opinion on, on 
it seems to me that the SEC is almost doing JW a but for test. That but for Ripple helped create the secondary market for XRP. Therefore, all XRP are investment contracts with Ripple. And I just I don't know in your you know teachings if you've ever seen anything stretch this far. Yeah, you know, all this is a symptom of the fact that the Howey test is just old and decentralized blockchain based activity is unlike anything that that test was made for. Um, this goes to the kind of like the almost philosophical question of is it once a security, always a security until you delist? Is that the way the securities laws function or not? And I've heard people debate either side. I'm willing to use whatever argument protects my baby coins. Uh, I don't know that it's necessarily a good, good public. There are some people like uh, 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 Lewis Cohen. I don't know if you know him at DLX, who his view is that uh, once is security, always is security. But that doesn't mean that all of these things are securities. I think he, he will agree with you on that. But right. there are other people that say, no, 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 consistent with Commissioner Purse's thinking behind the safe harbor, that uh, it should not be once a security, always a security, because so many projects evolve in a decentralized, increasingly decentralized way uh, after they're kind of created and helped a little bit then then, then shoved out of the nest, uh, that they're, they're, they eventually evolve to not being a security. And so that kind of singular view of the Howey test that once a security, always a security, it's not going to work. Um, we just need a new test. I mean, the fact is we just need a new test. And, you know, the other thing I want to talk to you about is... Um, the Howey test, even before your case came along, before crypto came along, the Howey test was already something I had an issue with. And I, I thought resembles in a lot of ways the SEC's abuse of insider trading law in the 80s and the 90s. They stretched the doctrine and stretched the doctrine. And eventually it went up to SCOTUS. Supreme Court said, hold on. No, that is not what we meant 30, 40 years ago. SEC stretched the doctrine. DOJ stretched it. Circuit courts have gone along with it, but that's not. We're, we're the Supreme Court. We overrule. Right. And so that's not what we originally intended. They did. They spanked the SEC and the DOJ a couple times in the 80s and the 90s. I think the Howey test has been stretched so far beyond the original text of the case, of the 46 case. It is ripe for that kind of action. And your case might be the one that does it. I mean, I hope you don't have to go all the way to SCOTUS, but the SEC's abuse of Howey for crypto might be it. Because, I mean, if you look at the elements of the test, right, an investment of money, but money no longer means money. Money means anything. Right. In a common enterprise, they have the horizontal, horizontal and vertical commonality theories in different circuits, a little different in every circuit. But really, they're kind of conflating the second element and the third element. Invest money in a common enterprise with the expectation of profit. And they say just if you want to make money off of it, that's the common thing you have in common. That's, right. a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a ridiculous. That means the second element doesn't really mean anything. And only the third element counts. But that's not how multi-factor tests work in the law. And then solely from the efforts of others. Solely, right? Solely no longer means solely. Right. Solely to a few circuits means ah, mostly. And then to some circuits, it's ah, a little bit. If there's somebody helping out a little bit, a consultant here or there auditing the code, then, it's, then it meets that element. That's crazy. And I see the Supreme Court today taking that up and saying, no, absolutely not. So I think that's where the SEC is headed. And it's uh, the SEC is playing with fire right now on that. Oh, I, I agree with you. We got two things. Well, when you hear Gary Gensler talk about the Howey test, he's he's eliminated one of the factors. He, for example, not just the solely factor, but he says if there's an expectation of profit. But as you know, the, the Howey decision says that an investment of money in a common enterprise and the promoter has led the people to believe right? The, the word is led to believe in expecta reasonable expectation of, private, of profits. And the issue there is, and, and I know because there's 65,000 XRP holders, and I have absolutely talked to thousands of them, believe it or not, through affidavits and things of that nature. And it turns out that the majority of first-time purchasers of XRP they were they were aware of the of a name of the term Ripple because Ripple and XRP was used interchangeably, but they were unaware of a software company or a company that sold software to banks called Ripple. And my question to you is: Can you enter into a common enterprise if you are oblivious with that promoter and that that common enterprise exists? Well, under the vertical commonality, I don't think you can. 
uh, you might be able to wonder horizontal commonality as it's understood now. But again, it's understood now in a way that's far beyond what the Supreme Court originally right. intended, I think. But yeah, I noticed that in your brief and, and, and your filings, and I thought it's incredible that never before has there been an SEC enforcement action where so many people, tens of thousands, how many is it? How many is it to join your amicus? 66,000. 66,000 people the SEC is purporting to protect say, <laughs> don't protect me. That's right. it. That's it. That's incredible. And that speaks to just, you know, case selection. Is this the right case to be spending your time on? There, there are real rug pulls, real Ponzi schemes, real frauds. Agreed. In that purport to be crypto that I don't, I don't think is legit crypto. And, and none of us who are mainstream crypto like or respect or want anything to do with. Why isn't the SEC spending its time there? I don't know. It, it, they're spending more time on these unilateral environmental disclosures that, again, is another example of, of in my opinion, the SEC, you know, um, taking jurisdiction where they don't have jurisdiction personally. But, um, you know, the the let me ask you, I have this belief that all altcoins, when they first start off, arguably could be squeezed into the Howie test if that's your goal, right? So, so I wouldn't say all, but I'll agree some. some. Okay. And sure. so, but wasn't it true that um, I heard Professor Grunfest in a video in 2015 say sometimes Bitcoin was viewed as a security back in the day. I don't know if you are aware of any of, of that, but the point I was making is that eventually when you first starting off, arguably you could say a lot of them fit into that. If you want to squeeze it into the Howey test, well, why wouldn't, do you have any insight on why Clayton wouldn't have adopted the safe harbor that Commissioner Peirce was promoting? Because it just seems, even JW, even if you take a company like Ripple, you could say, okay, you've got three to five years. Here's where you need to meet these benchmarks. If you meet these benchmarks, you're golden. If you don't, you're coming in and registering. Like, just why wasn't there that kind of proactivity, you know, by the commission, if you know? Yeah, I, you know, um, I don't know, man. Uh, it's, it, it's my, my thoughts about Clayton are, are, are difficult. It, it, it's kind of like if a friend of yours takes something you really like and lights it on fire. Um, you, you're kind of conflicted here. So I was a supporter of Clayton getting on the commission. He put me on this investor advisory committee. Uh, I always told him what I thought. And when the ICO craze first started, I said, you know, if you want to go after fraud and white papers that don't have anything going on, that's fine. But but you need a new system for, for legitimate projects to come into the fold and register, but still comply and not have ridiculous legacy laws that don't, don't allow them to, the, to do what they're here to do. Um, and I got a long debate with him about the Howey test. And he said, you know, the Howey test is fine. I said, no, it's not fine. It's old. It's so old. Yeah. Uh, it might give enforcement maximum discretion, but that's not the goal here. That's not what we're here to do. Um, and one thing I'll note, too, this is something that maybe folks don't don't focus on. One of the things Jay told me back then, it's about 2018, was he said, you know, uh, everybody's focused on the Howey test and investment contracts. But if I really need it, I have a second. Uh, I have a backup weapon. Uh, the word securities transfer is mentioned in, uh, I forget was if, if it's the 33 or 34 Act, might be 33 Act, there's a reference to securities transfer. And he felt like the SEC GC's office told him that he he could just call something securities transfer rather than a security, or rather than an investment contract and still call it, and still call it a security. So that's something to keep an eye on. Um, we might do our research on that. They pull that weapon out next time. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, Hester had already had a good idea for a safe harbor. That was cooking early back then, and she's had a second version now. Um, I don't know why he wasn't willing to go along with that. Uh, it is a little ironic that he's he's working in crypto now. Uh, but hey, welcome to the fold. You know, welcome. Now yeah. it's good to have good, to, good, good, good to have a conversion. Uh, <laughs> I'm Christian, so I always believe in a conversion. Yeah, it's a little it's a little hard to swallow when you when you you had the votes with Elad and and Hester, and you were the chairman, and then. You leave, and then you start writing the op-eds in the Wall Street Journal jur journal of how you we've got to get the regulation right. It's a little bit of a bitter pill, but you know, hey, it's better than nothing. I'll take it. I'll take a good conversion story. Yeah, I, I hear you. You know, here's the other thing that I want to ask you. I don't get to speak to securities experts, to be honest with you, very often. So I'm a little bit of a nerding out with you here. Oh, let's do it. 
<laughs> but, um, you know, when I filed the, the motion to intervene or in the alternative be granted amicus with participatory rights, uh, Ripple's response was, well, if the SEC will limit its claims just against Ripple and how Ripple sells XRP, then amicus have little to say. But if they're going to go forward with this token is itself a security, then amicus has a lot to say. And I've always scratched my head as to why they just don't stipulate to that. Because, you know, if you look at the Telegram decision by Judge Castell, he makes it even clear in his second opinion where he says the gram itself is not the security. Even the initial purchase agreement isn't a security. And we go back to Howie, we know it's the scheme and the packaging and the marketing. And um, I just didn't know if you had any thoughts on why they wouldn't simply focus on specific transactions by Ripple during specific years and go away from this, you know, it all is a is a a one a eight year long offering, including the secondary market. I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. Well, it's hard to speculate in the SEC strategy, uh, but I think it probably has to do with with um, you know this is their first really big test case. I think they were surprised that Ripple fought it, and um, I think they see it as as uh, you know, sometimes they will make decisions in a particular enforcement action. Or in a particular case where their regulation is challenged in the D.C. Circuit, they'll make a decision in one particular litigation. Maybe doesn't make sense for that litigation, but they feel like that position helps them in the future. So that might be part of what's going on here, I, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I used to be a federal prosecutor and I, I always, you know, as a federal prosecutor, you, you have to avoid the temptation of trying to win at all costs. And, and I have this belief that the, the SEC lawyers are they're engaged in the battle because every argument seems to be transactional to me. And they're ignoring their previous argument, you know, whether it's related to discovery battles or whether it's related to their actual your actual theories of the case. So, yeah, no, I, I agree. That's There's been some uh, lack of consistency in their positions in this case. And then if you bring in other cases and other filings. Well, they just they just kind of say whatever they need to say. It seems. Yeah, I mean the the, the other thing too is that it is with the Howie test in this case, the SEC went out of its way to to talk about how there was no consumptive, you know, intent for XRP holders. And I've already told you that the majority of first time purchasers, you know, they purchased it for the technology. You can open a trust line and you just want to use the, the DEX. I don't know if you're aware of this, but the XRP ledger has the world's first decentralized exchange built into it. And people go on there and buy casino coin or locks or other tokens. Um, and so, you know, Time Magazine accepts XRP as a payment, along with thousands of other merchants across the world. Many XRP holders have acquired it because they run YouTube channels. So a lot of the tokens that they've received are micropayments or donations or tips. And, and how do you think um, that focuses? Part of my job with the, with the Mikas is to try to get the court to focus on. There's a whole category of XRP users who are true users of the technology that therefore there is even first prong of how he isn't even met because it's not viewed as an investment. You know what I mean? And I just didn't know if you had any advice, whether that's a good angle to go, or you think that that's lost on the, on the court. No, I think it's an important argument whether it'll work with the court. I don't know, but I think it's, look, I think you did a good job. Uh, what I like about your brief is that every, you, you threw every shot at the wall that could possibly, <laughs> I can't think of any, any other angle on a first read um let's keep let's keep building more more ammo but i couldn't think of anything that you didn't hit uh and i think it's a great argument that look uh when you're registered as currency with the treasury but the sec says you're a security and uh and 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 for a lot of these the cftc's fighting with the FD, sec to, to suggest that a lot of tokens are commodities um and Gensler is fighting with his old agency that he once championed, and then now he wants to take jurisdiction from. Right. Uh, I mean, it's just not a way to run any kind of financial regulatory railroad. 
But I, I think, you know, in, in, in the definition of note, of what is a note, and this came up in the BlockFi case, the, the, the doctrine uh, uh, takes notice of the fact that if there is an alternative regulatory scheme, then it's less likely that the drafters of the securities laws intended for the SEC to regulate it. So, so with the note is, you know, regulated by a banker, then it's less likely. I think that principle should apply to investment contracts. And when it's something that supposedly investment contract is regulated as currency and 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 when its promoters are regulated as a money transfer business, I, I don't know if I think maybe Ripple probably is, right? Or someone in the XRP world is probably registered money transmitters. Those yeah. issues should be relevant, should be relevant to the to the, to the Howey test application. Oh, absolutely. Uh, uh, a subsidiary of Ripple's uh, was uh, labeled a money service business okay. uh, in 2015. Also, you know, you tell me, am I being too simplistic? When you take, let's take XRP and let's take Ethereum, which did have an ICO. We're allowed to stake our XRP or our Ethereum. We're allowed to collateralize it and take out a fiat loan. And the simple fact that we can do that, to me, takes it out of the, out of the last prong of the Howie that you're relying on the efforts of others to generate a profit or a financial benefit because the token itself is giving you that financial benefit. Um, yeah, and you do it by smart contracts that you enter into yourself. You know, that's the whole point of the brilliance of DeFi to me and why I'm so captured by it is that we become gold. We are Goldman Sachs yes. in DeFi. And and uh, that totally cuts against this efforts of the others definitions. So. Right. so what are you what are you most excited about as far as you uh, looking forward. I know that I know that DeFi is um, is near and dear to your heart, as you just spoke. Yeah, it is. It is. DeFi is near and dear to my heart. Um, I'm, I'm excited about the potential. Um, I'm excited. So if to my critics here, so I just you'll like this. I just had a Twitter debate today with John Reed Stark, who's a big crypto critic and, and uh, used to run an internet enforcement for the SEC for many years. And we're going to keep that debate going. But you know, one of the things I've, I've been telling him and telling others is that if all crypto, if all digital assets does, is just a couple of things here. If all they do is, number one, replace a broken uh, dinosaur payment system, which they, they've already done, uh, replace a broken payment system, uh, find a way to make it easier to remit money overseas to poor nations for immigrants to remit money, uh, develop play to earn games. Lots of people love their video games. And that is, that's not changing with the new generation. No. And uh, you want to keep your own stuff that you earn in the game and sell it. And then NFTs, not only for the art case, which is fine. That's not really my thing because I just don't know how to judge it. But uh, if that develops in a way to really um, uh, find a way to, 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 to have on-chain uh, proof of ownership of physical goods outside of the UCC system and filing securitized stuff with the Secretary of State and all that all that broken system. If all they do is that, that's the unsexy stuff. You're talking about five, ten trillion dollars of, of value here, or more on a global basis. Um, I think crypto can do a lot more than that. But that's just the basics that they're kind of already mostly there. It's just a question of getting more users into the system. Uh, so I'm excited about that. On the regulatory space, I think we got to keep fighting. Ripple's fighting. You're fighting. That should give more energy to more of us to join the fight. I hope more firms will fight when the SEC comes and says hey, we'll destroy you or you settle and here's the settlement. I hope they choose to fight. Uh, I continue to see more progressive Democrats not going down the path of Liz Warren and seeing the benefits of cryptocurrency. I continue to see, you know, your more libertarian Republicans were already there. Right. But uh, the establishment Republicans even feel like this is something interesting they want to be a part of. Some of them are kind of big bank shills and they're not going to help us. But most of them, I think, are on our side. So I think we've got a majority of Congress that's pretty much there with us. Um so I'm excited for the future. There's a lot of fights ahead, and I hope we can keep talking about how to plan the fight. I want to jump in the foxhole with you because I think you're I think you're good at what you do, man. Well, I appreciate it. Listen too. I hope you don't mind I, I, that um, I send uh, the uh, CEO of Library your name. Maybe okay. uh, you could help out there. I, I'm, I don't know if you're too familiar with the, the SEC's case against uh, Library, but. Um, in many ways, that case has even wider implications than the XRP case because the library token really is, you know, how many people, you know, own library for speculative investment reasons, right? The LBC token. I don't know anyone. And so um, 
if you don't mind, uh, I know that uh, uh, there's not a lot of people in their corner fighting, uh, to be honest with you. And they yeah, let's talk. I, I would talk to anybody who needs help. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, it's been my pleasure. I've been a big fan, especially after I saw you uh, tell Chairman Gensler um, in a very professional, tactful way <laughs> that you're not that you're not going away and you'll continue to fight their uh, gross overreach. So uh, anytime I can help you in any way, I'm here for you, brother. Well, thank you, John. It's good to meet you, man. And good to get to know XRP community. That's the energy we need. We need to fight for innovation. Absolutely. All right. Thanks. All right, Scotty. That was fun, man. Hey, it's outstanding. Yeah. Scott, you're on mute. There we go. More sound engineering for Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be the sound engineer for his garage band. I'm, I'm, I'm auditioning. <laughs> uh, I'd like to thank both of you very much. Yeah, and uh, John, I wanted to let you know that uh, a dear friend of both of ours, Chris, um, who you've spoken to a good bit, his daughter is home from the hospital. And secondly, it happens to be his 30th wedding anniversary today. And I didn't want to leave this interview without uh, having a chance to let you be able to wish he and his beautiful bride a happy 30th anniversary. Well, I'm so happy that his, his daughter is back from the hospital and you make sure that he knows that uh, happy anniversary. That's I will a, do that. That's a great accomplishment. That's great. Yes, it is. All right. Well, um, I, again, would like to thank the both of you and uh, we'll wrap it up. And I'd like to say two things in closing. Number one, uh, we, ha we have two goals at the XRP uh, Army, uh, our website, our YouTube channel. Um, number one is to get John Deaton in as many different interviews as we possibly can, because he is such a great voice for our community. And JW, we'd also like to be able to get you on as many interviews as we could um, with other people in the community, because the more that you two can get out there and, and tell what it is where that y'all believe in and what you think about this case, the better. And then number two, the, the driving mission of what we are all about is community unity. And if we can all pull together, just like 65,000 people join John's case, that strengthens his case. And JW, from your legal opinion, is John's case stronger with 65,000 or if it had been one? Absolutely stronger, sure. <laughs> right. yeah. It's kind of a layup question, right? Yeah, that's right. So, so anything that we do together as a community, y'all, I'm from the South, is better if we do it together. We are stronger together. All right. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much. I hope at some point we will be able to do this again and y'all can continue the conversation um, that we started today and y'all can update us to get update each other together again in the future. All right. Thank All you. Right, JW, I look forward to meeting you in person, my friend. Good to see you, John. Good to meet you. Bye-bye. Take care, everyone.